Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Wall Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I want to talk a little bit about a new toolbar that I've added to the Wall Plugin. So you can see here we have um, the standard Medique Wall Tools toolbar, which has all the uh, wall editing tools and open editing and uh, manipulating tools. So I guess I could have added these two new tools to this toolbar, but I thought, you know, it's getting a little long. Um, yeah, I guess, what have we got, 11 items now in that toolbar. So I thought these two new tools are not what I would call critical tools. Um, they're more a, I don't know, a function of a convenience, I guess, really. So, you know, basically both of these new tools, you can essentially do the same thing with the wall edit tool but it's much slower. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that. So let's go ahead and put these toolbars back uh, where I had them. I'm just gonna pop that in there right there somewhere. Okay, so we'll first go ahead and start with the, um, what's called the wall numbering tool or the number walls tool. And so you just go ahead and click that. And I, just so you know, I kind of preemptively drawn this uh, little structure here with a bunch of walls, just so we have that ready to go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click that and first thing you'll notice you have a little thing come up here, this little menu, and you'll see a wall prefix, a wall index, and an auto increment checkbox. So typically I think you, you know, I don't know why you wouldn't want it to auto increment. There may be some situation where you want to name a bunch of walls the same name, which you can do. Um, so that's why I have this option here where you can check this box or uncheck it. So typically it will by default uh, probably be checked and so I have it automatically being checked to begin with. So right off the bat you can see you have a wall prefix and then you have a wall index. And so for instance let's set this to X. Um, and then what will happen is it will start numbering these walls X1, X2, X3. Um, so, you know, when you generally draw these walls, um, the plugin's going to go ahead and uh, automatically put assigned names to them, kind of in the order that you drew them. But unfortunately, you know, that may not be the way you want to actually number your walls because for shipping reasons, if you're doing panelization, you may want to have a specific uh, numbering, uh, you know, sequence or order to the walls. So what you can do is once you've got your walls all drawn, you've got everything go going, I mean, yeah, you can get in here and you can edit each one of these wall panels and change the names, but that does take a lot of time and a lot of mouse clicks. So now what I'm going to show you is we're going to start kind of at this one corner here and work our way to this corner. And we're just going to go ahead and name the exterior walls starting with X1. So we go ahead and just click the wall. You'll notice it changed the name and then it changed that. And notice here also in the menu that as you click each wall, it will auto increment to the next um, number. And you know, if you want to say you get to X5 and then you want to jump to X10, well then you can just go ahead and set that indexing number right there. But we're just gonna go ahead and demonstrate this very simply. So now we've got X1, X2, X3. Maybe we're gonna set X4 over here, X5, X6, X7, X8. No, we got the wrong wall, that's fine. So then we just click X8 here. And oh, we have the wall check. We don't wanna, we don't wanna check or we don't wanna highlight a wall if we reset this. So we're gonna go ahead and hit X8. And then we go ahead and click this wall here. And then X9, I think it already was. Nope, it wasn't. And then finally X10. Okay, so, and you know, if you mess up, no big deal. Just restart your wall prefix or, you know, you can close the tool out, restart it, whatever you want to do, and then go back through and renumber them. So I'm going to show you how that would be. So like, for instance, so now let's say we want, uh, let's start with N1 and hit update. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start numbering these walls going back this way instead. So N1, N2, N3, um, you know, you just got to pay attention what you're doing here so you're not you're actually highlighting and click on the walls that you want to. Uh, I actually accidentally hit that wall, but that's fine. Um, anyways, so yeah, you can go in and quickly renumber all your walls. You don't have to open the edit menu. Um, you don't have to, you know, go through all those steps. 
and let's say the um, interior walls is like I1, right? Um, let's see here. Let's shift data to the I1 and I2. Okay. Close that out, and there you have it. We basically have edited all these walls numbers, and that was pretty, pretty quick actually. Like I said, you can always just you know edit a wall, um, and you can go in here and see you can change that from N10 to whatever you need to do. But you realize you know as you as you do that, you're you're having to click on each wall and then update, and it's not uh, auto incrementing, so it does it would go a lot slower. So basically, that's the uh, wall um, new wall numbering tool. I think it will be quite handy for a lot of people that are doing panelization and that sort of thing. Okay, so let's get to the next tool here. Now, this next one is kind of interesting. Um, this one is for editing corners. So specifically, um, let's take turn the sheathing off here real quick. Uh, let's see, where is that? And actually, let's turn the dimensions off. We don't need all those on right now. Okay, so if you take a look at these outside corners or actually inside corners of these exterior walls, you're going to notice that you have what I call an inset wall and a regular outside wall. Now, when you go ahead and draw these walls initially with the plugin, um, you know, the plugin basically just kind of does its own little thing and will us automatically assign which wall is the inside and which wall is the outside. And you know, typically that's fine for most people, but there are cases where you want to swap that around. I mean, there's nothing saying that these walls have to lap this way and this way on these corners. They could go uh, a different a different route, right? So what I've done is, I mean, and like I said, you can always go in and you can edit the wall assembly and you can go over here to your wall starts and your wall corners or your start and your end corners and you can change this inset outside corner and this and the end here <clears throat> um, to like an outside corner but again um, you know sometimes that's not very intuitive for people because you know they, they change this walls start and then they got to think okay do I change the start of this wall or do I change the end of this wall to make it match the start of this wall so because you know that is kind of confusing well I wouldn't say it's confusing it's just you got to it makes it requires you to think a little bit more right um, what this does now is if you click this edit corners tool you'll notice as you mouse over each wall and as you drag your mouse along this wall closer to one corner or the other it will highlight that corner and it will tell you what that corner configuration is. So this here is saying it's an inset outside corner and this one also is an inset outside corner. Now if I go over this wall it will show me that that's an outside corner at the start and an outside corner at the end. And notice the green and red. Um, the green signifies the start of the wall and the red signifies the outside or the end of the wall, sorry. Okay so now you ask well what good is all this? Well watch what I can do now. So if I click on this, I go to like, let's say this corner, say it's an outside corner, but I want this wall to be the inset wall. I just click right here. Okay, now notice it's now telling me it's the inset outside corner. Of course, that doesn't match this one, but now I just go over to this wall and I can click it, and now it's an outside corner. So basically with two mouse clicks, I've changed the configuration of this framing corner here. And then you can just, you know, uh, I mean, you can stop there, um, or you can just keep going. You don't, I mean, <clears throat> if you want to move things around, um, it's really easy with this tool. And of course, this also applies to inside corners. Now, look, we've got this inside, uh, what I call an inside corner, and on this side, we've got an inset inside corner. So let's first of all um, change this one. Okay, now let's change this one. Okay, so now you see we've swapped this around. Maybe we want to do that on this side too. Okay, so now we've swapped it around. Actually, let's uh, let's change that and then yeah, that's better. Um, so, anyways, um, I think this tool is is like I said, it's not critical, but it is a convenience thing. Like if you want to get on here into your you know framed up structure and say. 
okay, I like the way most things are framed, but maybe I want to swap this here wall around. So it basically requires you to take four clicks. Okay, and then I go over to this corner, get that side, and then get this side. And there you have it. Now you've got an outside corner or an inset outside corner on both ends of this wall. Anyways, um, and then, you know, to jump out, you just hit the space bar. <clears throat> I think, you know, it, you know, these two tools, like I said, they're not critical, but they, for people that are doing panelization or, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to change things up quickly with a lot of walls involved. Um, they, I think they do offer some significant uh, efficiencies and, and, and speeding things up. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about these two new tools and I got to thank uh, Larry and Mike for uh, suggesting them because that's uh, where they came from. Uh, one last thing though I wanted to mention too with that though is if you do click this tool now, if you notice like on these walls here, this is what's a, this ends in a T corner. And if you click that, you'll notice that it doesn't actually do anything. So right now, currently the way the tool is um, configured is it will only change a wall corner configuration if it's an outside corner, inset outside corner, uh, inset inside corner, or inside corner. So T corners, terminal, and ends, um, those corners or wall end configurations do not get changed. So even if you click on this, it's going to say action aborted. It, it, it just, it won't do anything with it. All right. Um, you know, if you have any questions on this, um, give me a holler. Um, these are both brand new tools. Um, you know, I've tested them, but, uh, you know, there may be ways to make them a little uh, more efficient, a little more clean, maybe the interface a little better. So I'm always open to suggestions. So once again, guys, thank you for supporting me and we will talk to you guys later.